Some of you came to my office asking about the solution of this second order circuit question from last year's final exam. It is solved uh, on YouTube, but the first part of it is not. That was the question. What to do with that? What's special about this second order circuit? It has the standard set of resistors and inductor and capacitor. But it has an AC source. That is what makes that so special for the final of last year's. How to deal with that? The circuit has been like this, with this switch A closed and switch B opened for a very long time. Oh, okay, okay, so that means that the circuit was in steady state for a long time. But because the source is AC, that means that the circuit was in AC steady state. And we know how to resolve circuits in AC steady state, right? We use phasers. Well, what does it mean? That means that instead of the inductor, we will use J omega L, the impedance of the inductor. Omega is 400 RPM, uh, sorry, um, radians per second. So this number instead of 10 is J4 ohms. So that's right. Here we have J4 ohms. And we replace the capacitor by its impedance negative J1 over omega C. We operate with this 400 radians per second and that capacitance, and we get that this impedance is negative J3. We are ready. We control that circuit in AC state state be before this switch opens and that switch closes. Let me erase this branch because it's doing nothing but confuse the topic. Of course, we also have to represent the source with a phase. Peak value 141, the RMS value is going to be that divided by root 2, that is 100 volts. The phase is 0 degrees. We are ready. We use phasers to solve this. Well, let's find that. This current will be the current in the inductor, right? Well, how do I find that? Uh, that current is going to be 100 with 0 degrees. That is just 100 divided by the total impedance seen by the source. And that is 4,4 4 in series with a parallel of 3 and uh, 3, negative 3. And that is the current in the inductor. Well, as a phasor, at least, we can always write that later as a function of time. And then we need to find this voltage in the capacitor. How am I going to do that? Well, let me call this the reference node, and this is node 1. V1 will be the value of the source, 100 minus the drop in this impedance. So I say V1 is going to be 100 with 0 degrees minus IL that multiplies 4, 4. That impedance times IL. That's going to be the voltage V1, this one, between node 1 and the reference, and then what? And then Vc can be obtained by a voltage divider. Vc is going to be V1, whatever I compute up here, multiplied by negative J3, divided by the total impedance of the branch 3, comma negative 3. That is this voltage. And once I have them as phasors, I can write them as functions of time. The values of that current and that voltage in the capacitor, the current in the inductor 14.9 amps with this phase, and the voltage in the capacitor 20 volts with this phase. Now we can write those voltages and currents as functions of time and the current in the inductor. Well, for some reason this doesn't want to work. So we finally can write the current in the inductor IL as a function of time. It is 14.9, 14.9, root 2, to have the peak value, and that is sine of 400T, because we're talking of sines in this, um, minus 30 degrees. See, as you do the conversion, 30.4 degrees. That is occurring in the inductor and the voltage in the capacitor as a function of time. In steady state is... 20, the RMS value, times root 2 to get the peak value of that way, sine, because the source is a sine, 400T minus 93.8, minus 93.8 degrees. These are volts. But now the question, 
the question says that switch opened when this voltage in this source was halfway between zero and the peak value well that's interesting so that means the time tx of operation of the switches is not specified what they tell us is uh, that the source uh, was halfway between zero and the peak value when that happens so this is a peak value 141 and uh, when it was right here uh, something 70.5 volts that is when the switch is operated so if we call this point here zero what is this time what is tx what is that time of operation so let's see first we compute what is this angle here and then we transform that angle into time well what angle is that ah, right here the sine wave is one right here the sine wave is 0 0.5 what angle has a sign that is 0.5? 30 degrees. So you say as an angle, this distance is 30 degrees. We only have to transfer those 30 degrees into time to know at one point in time, actually, the voltage of the source was halfway between 0 and 141, which is where the problem says the switches operated. Hmm. Uh, well, let's see. The frequency is omega 400. Uh, but that in reality is 2 pi f but f is the inverse of the period so uh, those 400 actually is 2 pi over t that tells us that the period of that way that is on 360 in degrees is 2 pi divided by 400 seconds and uh, that is 360 degrees and our question is if 360 degrees is this many seconds, 30 degrees is how many seconds? Is Okay, 30 degrees corresponds to Tx, which is an unknown. And when you use proportionality and find Tx is 30 divided by 360 that multiplies the period, 2 pi divided by 400. Those are seconds. And once we compute that one, we can introduce uh, that value here and uh, there to determine what was IL0 and what was VC0, the initial conditions of that circuit. You want numbers? Tx is 1.31 milliseconds approximately. Substitute that here to find uh, these two values. And those are the values you are waiting, IL as a function of time at Tx, and Vc as a function of time at Tx. IL0 is negative 147 milliamps, and Vc0 is negative 25 volts. Thank you very much.